Our study today is on Timothy, or Timothy, a man found in the New, in the New Testament, and we will first find him in Acts 16, verse 1. Then came he to Derby and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there, named Timothy. All right, so Timothy, Timothy, is a disciple. And he's found by Paul, a son of a certain woman, which was Jewish, Jewish. So his mother is Jewish. And believed. All right, so they're believers, Jewish. But his father was a Greek. But. An unbelieving father, Gentile. So Timothy was a half breed, Jewish, Greek, which is well reported by the brethren, Christians, that were at Lystra and Iconium. Him, Timothy, would Paul have to go forth with him and took him and circumcised him because the Jews which were in those quarters. Now, we're not under the law of circumcision. T to Moses, a half-Jew by his mother, Greek by his father, was not circumcised. And what the idea is, with Paul dealing with the Jews, and the Jews knowing who Timothy is, who his parents were, knowing that he was not circumcised according to the Jewish law, he had Timothy circumcised that to deal with the Jews, there would be no destruction, no, no disruption. It says they knew his father was a Greek. So it's not that Paul is keeping the law, is Paul is keeping the law because of who they were, Jews. Now this is not a license. If you're going to go deal with drug addicts, you're going to go deal with hippies, well, I'm going to smoke dope with them. That's not it. That's, smoking dope is not under the law. Hippies and, and, and drug they're, they're not under the law of the Bible, but the Jews were. And Paul had to satisfy God's people, the Jews, of the satisfaction they knew who Timothy was, and they knew who his father was, and they knew at what stance that Timothy grew up. He grew up as a half-breed Jew, not circumcised. And if Paul were to be continue his ministry with the Jews, Timothy would be a thorn in the ministry of Paul. So, we have that. Now we go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, okay, and Timothy, our brother, he saved, and we read that before in Acts 16, unto the church of God which is at Corinth, and all the saints which are, which are in Achaia. So, Timothy is saved. Timothy is a half-breed Jew. Timothy is now circumcised. Timothy is in the ministry of Paul, serving with and for Paul. And we go to 1 Timothy 1. First Timothy one verse 
Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior, and the Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope, unto Timothy, who the book is written to, my own son. Oh, wait a minute. We read earlier that Timothy was the son of a Greek. Paul's not Greek. Paul's Jewish. What's the situation here? In the faith. Spiritually, Timothy is Paul's son. Uh, yes. Spiritually, Timothy is Paul's son. Physically, Timothy's dad is a Gentile, a Greek. And it's proper to say that when you witness and people that trusted and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ through your witnessing, through your prayers, through your efforts, through your watering, through your sowing, they become your spiritual children. I've got spiritual children out there. I'm not bragging. I'm going by the scriptures. From the many ministries that God has had me to be, and hopefully God will have me to be in the future. Now, are they my physical sons like my son Henry? No. Which, by chance, my son Henry is my physical son, came from me and my wife, but my son Henry is also a spiritual child of mine because I had part in the salvation. And there are people out there, they have fathers, physical fathers, and yet I am their spiritual father. They are my spiritual son because I was involved in their, in their salvation, God using me. And for the fact, too, is, is a, to a fact is my father-in-law is also a spiritual son. Because God used me for his salvation, and I, and I tried as long as I could before I came to Florida to help and train him in the Bible. And it worked out pretty well when we came down to Florida. And I know in the church house we call each other brothers and sisters. We are. Okay. Acts 17. You say, Style, you're all over the place. I helped you. Acts 17, 14. I believe my nose is running. I'm trying to find my. There it is. My oxygen. Okay. Acts 17, 14. And immediately the, Paul, immediately the brethren sent away Paul to go as far as the sea, but the Silas and Timotheus bold them still. So, Berener, or Berena, verse 13, the Jews came and assaulted Paul. They sent Paul out to sea. Silas and Timothy are taken over while Paul is sent. And they conducted Paul and brought him to Athens, or Athens, 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 and received a commitment unto Silas and to Moses for to come to him with all speed, and they departed. Now, while Paul waited for them in Athens, so what happens is, while in Berena, the Jews of Thessalonica come, they assault Paul. Paul is sent away. He leaves Silas and Timotheus. Paul ends up in Athens, Athens, and while there, he says, Timothy, Silas, come over here. I need your help. So that Timothy to Moses, the man who we're looking at, chapter 18, verse 5, and when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. So, 
There's the work of the ministry. There's the work of to the Jews. That's why Paul had to Moses or Timothy circumcised. Because the fact is, if the Jews would have saw that he was not circumcised, there would have been an eruption. Again, Paul is not putting forth the law as salvation. He's putting forth the law because the Jews were obeying the law and they knew that if this Jewish half-breed child named Timothy, whose father was a Greek, they knew if he didn't obey the law, that it would be used against the ministry, against the work that Paul had. So they couldn't, would not be able to say, well, let's see Timothy. Let's see if he's really a true, good Jewish. Yeah, he was. Chapter 19, 22. Chapter 19, 22. So he went to Macedonia, two of them that were ministered unto him, to Moses and Herodotus. So Timothy ministers unto Paul. You see, a minister is not just somebody who's in charge of a church. A minister here to Timothy would be, go get the needs that Paul has needs of. Write the things that Paul needs to have written. See to the needs that Paul has. And there are many ministers of a church, and they don't do anything for the church, but the church does all for them. That's wrong. You see, the minister of a church, the minister of Paul, was anything that Paul needed, Timothy would do. Anything that the church would, the pastor, the minister would do. You see, minister can be a word that is a noun, but it's also a word that goes with a verb, action. And like I said, too many get into the ministry, minister, ministry, ministry is a work. And they have everybody do everything for him. So there's Timothy. He's a minister. He helps Paul. And probably helps others. Chapter 20 of Acts. Verse 4. And there accompanied him into Asia. So fatter of Verena. There's Verena again. Maria. And of the Thessalonians. Arsitikus. And Sig Secundus, and Gaius a Derby, there's Derby, and to Moses, and of Asia, Titicus and Termosus. So, Gaius of Derby and to Moses accompanied, worked with, associated themselves with, were partners with, that were great help with, to Moses or Timothy. Listen, Paul would not write his name. Paul would not ascribe a name of somebody who was weak, who was wrong, who didn't help, who was a deadbeat. That's not Timothy. Now, Romans... Romans chapter 16, verse 2, and not verse 2, maybe 21. T 21. To Moses, my fellow, excuse me, no, to Moses, my work fellow. To Moses was what we would say a co-worker. To Moses was he worked with and for and by Paul. And we read
read the scripture so far, he was a reliable worker. He was a minister of Paul. So there's much said about Timosis or Timothy. 1 Corinthians 4. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 17. For this cause have I sent unto you to Moses, my beloved son. Again, he's not Paul's son. He's the son of a Greek. He's a spiritual son of Paul, a faithful in the Lord, who shall bring unto you the remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. So, Paul is now taking Timothy, and he's sending him out to bring to remembrance, to preach, and to teach what Paul, and a spokesman for Paul, and the ministry of Paul. And he speaks as to Moses again, his beloved son, and it's so funny, what is the characteristics of Paul and Timothy? Paul will, rule, rule, Paul will use the expression used by God about Jesus, beloved son. And Jesus Christ, the beloved son of God, fulfilled 100% of the ministry, 100% of the work, 100% the work fellow, 100% Everything that God would have to be done of Jesus, by Jesus, for the Father, Jesus 100% settled. And God says, his beloved son. And Paul says, beloved son. The same two words. Don't miss that. Now, 1 Corinthians 16, 10. First Corinthians sixteen ten. We read Now if Timothus come, okay, see that he may be with you without fear. That's interesting. When he comes, if he shows up to the Corinthian church, don't put him in fear. Don't cause him to fear. For he, <clears throat> excuse me, worketh the work of the Lord. He's a worker of the Lord. He is faithful to the Lord, as I also do. So Timothy is a twin counterpart of Paul. Like Jesus was of God. Let no man therefore despise him. But conduct him forth in peace. Give him peace. Don't give me a hard time. Don't make him fear. That he may come unto me, for I look for him with the brethren. He's going to hang out with the church. He hangs out with the brethren. He doesn't hang out with the losers. He doesn't hang out with the lost people. Second Corinthians is one nineteen. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by me, and Silvanus, and Timothy, the Moses, was not yea or nay, but him was yea. Timothy preached Jesus Christ. Timothy preached the gospel. Timothy taught Jesus Christ. Timothy preached and taught. Now, Philippians 1, verse 1. 
Paul and Moses, there they are together again. The servants of Jesus Christ. So Timothy and Paul, Timothy being our subject, are servants of Jesus Christ. Look at all the things that Paul has written about Timothy. Look at all the things that Luke, through Acts, Luke is the writer of the book of Acts, has written about Timothy. And yet, have you ever had your pastor get up and preach about Timothy like we're doing now? Have your pastor ever got up and say, do you dare to be a Timothy? Oh, dare to be a Daniel. Dare to be a Timothy. Two nineteen. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send to Moses shortly unto you. So here he is again, trusting to Moses to go about his work. And here to go and check how this church is doing, to give a true report of how the state of this church is doing, and to get such a true report of an honest report, he says, I'm going to hopefully send to Moses. And I'm putting my trust in the Lord, who we preach, that to Moses will be sent by me, that he will come back and give me a true report, and no rumors and no lies on how well you guys are doing. Or how terrible you guys are doing. Whatever the case may be. Okay. First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 1.1. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus. Under the church of Thessalonians. So there he is again. Uh, verse. Three, I think. Amen. All right, we try three, six. Chapter three, verse six. But now, when Timotheus came from you unto us and brought us good tidings, there you go, of the faith and charity, that ye have good remembrance of us always. So, Timotheus brought a report. Thomas, uh, to Moses went to churches and he would go into the churches and he would communicate, he would fellowship, he would probably preach, he would probably teach, and then he would bring a report back to Paul and say, hey, things are well there. Or Paul, you know, uh, we got a little problem there. He's been faithful. He's a servant of Jesus Christ. He would not bring a lying report back to Paul. Verse 2, 3 2. And I sent to Moses our brother. So say, you know, we say brother and sister, and minister of God. A servant of Jesus Christ. A minister of God ministered unto Paul. I'm wondering all these people that call themselves ministers. Do they match up with Timothy? Now, Timothy is a sinner. Do they do the things that Timothy? Do they have that honest report like Timothy? And fellow laborer. Paul said earlier he's a fellow worker. Now he says fellow fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ. Jesus Christ suffered and died, was buried and born, <laughs> suffered and died, and raised from the dead three days and three nights. He didn't try to get them to, you know, how many apples and goldfish you can swallow. He didn't go about worldly carnal ways. He didn't preach, you know, oh, the great love of God. He preached the gospel. Jesus told the disciples, go out and preach the gospel. That's what, that's what Timothy's doing. 
to establish you and comfort you concerning your faith. All right, so he, there, there are saved people. He's comforting the saved people with, with, with preaching and teaching. For the lost people, he's preaching the gospel of Christ. He's taking part in the ministry of whatever they're doing, reaching out the public ministries. Talking with people on the street, preaching on the street, maybe getting literature out in the street. <coughs> but he's having part. Second Timothy. Chapter 1, verse 5. When I call to remembrance the unframed, no lying, no faults, it's the truth. It's a genuine faith that is in thee, Timothy, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, I am persuaded that in thee also. So Paul says, listen, your, your faith came from your grandmother. Your faith came from your mother. And I believe that the same faith of your mother and your grandmother is in you. Parents. You better be teaching your children. You better be establishing the faith of Jesus Christ in your children. You say, it may not work. It's not doing good. There's no hope. I wonder how many times Eunice and Lois thought that about little Timothy. Before Timothy came around. Look where Timothy ended up. Look what we've been reading about Timothy. Look, do we know the name of Timothy's father? No. We know the we know the name of his mother, Eunice, and we know the name of his grandmother, Lotus. How many grandmothers do you know in the Bible? Lois had to be a special woman for the Holy Spirit said, Paul, put her name down. You're going to meet Lois and Eunice in heaven one day. And their dear little boy named Timothy. I wonder how many Baptist churches out there know the name of Lois or Eunice. Or will they preachers ever get out the gospel of Matthew? Open your Bibles to Matthew. Open your Bibles to gospel of Matthew. Oh, the love. Oh, the beautitudes. Oh, how great. How about Timothy? How many men, how many men in your church have taken on their characteristics of Timothy? How many women in your church have established themselves before God as a Lois, as a Eunice? Huh? How many? How many even heard the name Timothy? Or even know who Timothy is. Some of you are going to say to Moses and Timothy, and you're going to be attracted to who is that? Who is that? First Timothy. First Timothy five. Last verse. First Timothy five twenty three. Now, I've heard this personally, but I've heard more preachers use it. I've heard it one person, I believe one person, that they will use this verse, 1 Timothy 5.23, to give them legalization to drink. Drink no longer water. But use a little wine, little wine for thy stomach's sake and often infirmities. Frequent sicknesses. Now, Timothy had a stomach problem. Timothy couldn't handle the water or something. I don't know what it is. Paul says, use a little wine. Don't go wolfing it down. He said, when your tummy's upset, have a little wine. It's not unlicensed to get drunk. 
It's not a license to be an alcoholic. It's a license. It's a license because you have an infirmity. Now, Second Timothy four. I know I say this last, but I just thought of another one. Four eleven. Only Luke is with me. You know who Luke was? Luke was a medical doctor. Luke was a medical doctor. So when you go back to Second Timothy. First Timothy, excuse me. You go back to First Timothy five, verse twenty-three. You know what Paul's done? I don't know, Doctor Luke. I don't know. Yeah, Timothy. He's got a problem with his stomach. He does. All right, Paul. I'll tell you what you do. Tell him in your next letter to drink no longer water, no more water, but use a little wine. For your stomach problems and the problems you're having. It's it's a prescription by a doctor, by a medical doctor. And you don't know how many people out there will use that verse to be an alcoholic, to drink. Christians have used that verse. Well, oh, you're a little wine. Yeah. You got a stomach problem? No. Okay, no, don't. Don't twist the scriptures. 